food production is a very worthwhile thing and it feels like a very worthwhile career. This is the only business I've worked in that has such a commitment to the customer and such an energy and such a passion for, for what we do. What we feed our animals is what we eat. AB Agri is a community of leading agricultural businesses that employs more than 3,000 people in over 70 countries worldwide. An understanding of agriculture's importance in our world and a desire to change it for the better has been a core philosophy of the business for 30 years. In 1985, a small team at British Sugar saw an opportunity to build a business creating cost-effective and nutritious animal feed from a loss-making waste product. I started in November 1981. I actually joined as a campaign temp but they always said in Peterborough, if you can get into British Sugar, you'll be there for life. <laughs> and I am still Which has been. <laughs> A lot of times farmers could go into the sugar factories and just take away the wet pulp and the press pulp for free of charge. The farmers would say, well, it's just a waste. You know, we've had it for nothing for years. So there was a lot of people joined the business then to really start to kick start the, uh, the sugar beet business. By 1990, Trident sugar beet feed was selling over 700,000 tonnes to farmers. Confidently applying the processing and marketing knowledge gained during this period, they secured a contract with United Distillers, today known as Diageo, to sell the dark distillers grains left over from whiskey production. ABF's acquisition of British Sugar created further opportunities for the ambitious team, including the 1992 purchase of merchanting business KW Alternative Feeds. We joined an organisation which was probably uh, more akin to what KW Alternative Feeds was about and therefore um, it felt that there was a, a, a better vision for the future and the growth of the business. As I've worked in AB Agri and it's got bigger and bigger, there still is that family feeling to the business that um, I think has remained. The uh, acquisition of the business by uh, Trident and the, the critical mass it gave us as a, as a feed business allowed us really to start to explore how we could play a more fundamental role in that whole feed industry. Expansion continued throughout the 90s, firstly with the acquisition of Bibby and the implementation of new systems and infrastructure to build a business fit for the future. I think Alan was the first one banging on the door saying, well, okay, we've implemented a system, but where's my margin report? And I think that was symptomatic of the years to come, i.e. you need to have a good focus on costs and make sure that all your margin reporting or profitability reporting as it came or EBIT reporting, as it eventually became, was system driven and not, uh, not in the back of a book or on the back of a fact bucket. Yeah, I mean, just, just going back in time and actually thinking about how the better people were tracking margin, they were doing it in a book, they were writing it down, uh, sales price, raw material cost, but then how were they tying that to the volumes that we'd purchased to that? And, they, and that's where some of the thinking came in, how can we make this much more um, uh, efficient? And the systems really helped us to do that. One of the things that's really important with acquisitions is you really think about where's the value and what it is we're purchasing. And most of the time I've been involved with acquisitions in AB Agri, more often than not it's been about the people. And I think Bibby was a really good example where we were new into this particular, particular industry sector and some of the people that we had acquired took senior management positions to support us with what we wanted to do with the business and I think that's what made it a success. In 1995, initial excursions to Asia resulted in the construction of a Shanghai feed mill in partnership with Chinese business Huawei Nong. And originally, we had two production mills. Now we have six. This not only shows our business development in the China market, but also demonstrates the confidence our UK headquarters have in us. The announcement of a possible link between BSE and mad cow disease in March 1996 led to an overnight decline of 40% in domestic beef product sales, plus the total loss of export markets. When the announcement came out about meat and bone meal being a potential risk in affecting the food chain, we remember it was the Minister of State, Stephen Dorrell, the 20th of March, 10.30. I was sat in a conference in Scarborough. That was who was electric with what does this mean for the animal feed industry? But we'd been 
on top of this, for many years we knew what the issues were, we'd already started to lead the change that we had to do in our feed mills, but with the industry as a whole. So suddenly there was an awareness that what was going into feed could potentially affect the health of the population and that really did open everybody's eyes. We were headline news on the BBC News, so we set about writing um, a universal feed assurance scheme and we knew that we'd got to get all of the members of the Trade Association to comply with that because the weakest link would have us all back on the 10 o'clock news again. Having done that, we gave the scheme to the industry and it now is used by 100% of uh, UK feed producers. Absolutely, and also we've exported this scheme throughout the world. It's used from Chilean fish producers to yeast manufacturers in China. It's now rolled out to many different countries throughout the world. Now separated from British sugar and incorporating fishes and allied grain, the group saw the agricultural industry face further crisis. First, swine fever, then foot and mouth. Actions to ensure future growth and profitability included the sales of the company's ruminant compound feed manufacturing business, part of the Central Labs operation, and BQP. Is the market interesting? Can you be a major player in that market and have you got the skill set that are going to enable you to play well in that market and win in that market? In our view, the right portfolio of businesses means that you have to be in businesses where you can establish a truly market leading position. And so it was with that background that we looked at our portfolio of businesses in the late 90s and the early 2000s which led us to some of the decisions we made um, in terms of exiting some and investing in others. This was followed by a rigorous process to identify new business opportunities at home and abroad. One such prospect was the development of a new feed ingredients business overseen by industry experts Richard Cooper and Haddon Graham. To try and implement this bigger vision that David Yeand had, one of the first things he did was say, well, you can look after Vistavet as well. So I inherited a small trading business in, in Northern Ireland. It, it gave us a little bit of a platform, it gave us a bit of knowledge of this market. We were able to, to grow it quite successfully. And probably, most, maybe most important of all, it gave us our name. That's where AB Vista comes from. Well, the first thing we did business-wise was to look at what assets ABF had, what products could they produce that we could sell and we, we, we discovered fairly quickly that within ABF there was an enzyme producing business, a yeast producing business and a business producing a product called betaine and that's, those were products that we were familiar with and thought we could build a business around. Across the road there was our first office. The Wednesday of the first week, uh, you come to my house on Monday and, and you come again on Tuesday and then the Wednesday morning, nine o'clock, my wife left the house. She didn't say where she was going, she just left the house. And by 10 o'clock, she came back with a piece of paper. She handed me the paper, said, this is your office. I have spoken to the estate agents. It's ready for you, move. <laughs> it wasn't actually an office, more like a cupboard with, a, with another cupboard. You know, we were a tiny little business. George Weston from ABF came to see us, which was quite indicative of the ABF culture that tiny little businesses, startup businesses like this are, are important, just as important as the big businesses. The growth of the feed ingredients market, coupled with the base of developing evidence supporting the use of specialist feeds for neonates, prompted the decision to approach the Primary Diets business to join the group. Primary Diets business was all about feeding the baby pig. When uh, the pig is taken away from the sow, we've got to transition from sow's milk onto solid food as quickly as possible. That's a very stressful and difficult time for the piglet. AB Agri approached us um, and said that they would like to distribute our product nationally and so uh, eventually we saw sense and uh, took the opportunity to uh, distribute our product through uh, the AB Agri network and uh, I think the, the shared passion is what it was all about. Passion for uh, I think producing really good products that do a really good job um, and, and made our customers uh, lives easier and, and more profitable. They enabled us to do things that we just hadn't got the capability of, of doing on our own. With the emerging global commodities market impacting the price of raw materials in the UK, the group continued to look forward, investing in systems and staff to better serve arable farmers in the future. This drive to create a good business fit for the changing commercial landscape led to the creation of the Frontier Business, a groundbreaking joint venture with Cargill. 
the two businesses, when you put them together, at best, were making a profit, an EBIT of, of six million pounds. And uh, the business plan basically took us to about nine million pounds over the first sort of three, four years, thereabouts. And I, I remember saying to Mark, do you, think, do you think we could, what about, instead of nine, could we, could we possibly double this? And, and do you think we could, maybe we could get it to 12? I said, well, 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 stretch. real stretch. And look at us now, 37, you know, fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Back in, in 2005, it was a tough industry. Volatility was arriving, a global marketplace. Changes to CAP were making the, the industry more dangerous. And what we were able to create in Frontier was a really strong business with a high, le a high level of critical mass, over 20% market share. They asked me, how are you gonna run the business? And I said, look, we're gonna have one central grain book centrally located in Lincolnshire where we will run our short long position and price the book because that's the sort of um, flexibility and speed you need in the current market and they said Mark it's not going to work it's not going to work a year later um, I was back in the Del Mahoy Hotel and they said we've never made as much money in our lives and I said well it's nothing to do with me you've made it work and they had so they you know they yeah. they bent their backs they'd, they'd opened their minds and, and we'd done it in 2008 the Primary Diets team saw an opening for starter feeds in the rapidly growing and modernising Eastern European pig farming market. Recognising the need to expand AB Agri's offering to incorporate practical and nutritional expertise, the group approached Premier Nutrition. Premier Nutrition was a business that was founded by nutritionists, was uh, owned, managed by nutritionists and was organised around nutritionists. So uh, what we tried to do as a business was to be a, um, a very attractive place for the key nutrition talent in the country to want to come and work here. We'd had a strong relationship with, uh, with AB Agri for a number of years as a, as a customer. So there was a, a strong and sort of trusting working commercial relationship with AB Agri uh, prior to any talk of acquisition. We could uh, perceive within AB Agri's plans that uh, they, they saw the need for a premix operation with, uh, within their business. As the agricultural industry continued to consolidate, AB Agri strengthened associations with new and existing customers, brand owners and processors. These partners trusted in AB Agri's products, services and proficiency in better connecting supply chains, building brand integrity and firming their relationships with farmers. By 2008, AB Sustain was improving efficiency and reducing carbon emissions via an on-farm carbon capture model. We decided to build a model and, and working with colleagues in the AB Sustain team and with a third party that helps us with a, with a sort of a, a big model approach to aggregate all the farms, we put together, I think, a really practical, successful model, which to this day has stood the test of time. Yeah, we didn't know it at the time but what we've learned since is it's still the best model in the world. And a lot of the principles that we, we worked on with the SUSTAIN model that really demonstrated very clearly that we are years ahead of our European competitors. We can now apply and give really good advice, direction to influence policy to create these models that will make a big difference in, in the future. So now on an annual basis we audit somewhere between 2,300 and 2,500 UK farms for Sainsbury's across all the 15 product categories. Since 2010, newer members of the AB Agri community have experienced phenomenal growth. AB Vista has grown into the third largest player in the global feed enzyme sector, while Premier Nutrition and Primary Diets, now combined as Speciality Nutrition, have developed significant relationships with leading food industry businesses while enhancing supply chain links with China. Quantum Blue has it's been an incredibly important part of AB Vista's history and development. We acquired the original Quantum Blue, Quantum Blue molecule um, in 2008. We brought it to market in 2011 and since then it's been uh, really the driver of our growth and success and it now represents half our turnover. I think it's fair to say in the development of Quantum Blue we really surprised ourselves yeah. as to what it, you know, what it could do. We had a lot of jumping around in the office at the time when we looked at some of the early results. Wow! What mm. is that? Mm. So it was quite quite an exciting moment. Quantum Blue is seen as a as a pioneer product by the market. It is a pioneer product. Mm. 
AB Agri's core UK and Chinese operations have also advanced and reshaped to future-proof their systems, structures and people. 2010 saw the move to combine the KW, Trident and ABM brands under one name, AB Connect. Around about 2010-2011, um, UK agriculture had gone through uh, a few years of, uh, of volatile commodity movements across um, AB Agri there was a recognition that actually putting the businesses together could drive efficiencies and could drive cost control in what was a really difficult marketplace. The, the ownership for really looking at what the opportunity was and really making that decision to go ahead with forming uh, AB Connect was with the leadership of ABN and with the leadership of KW and Trident. So it was about getting the right balance uh, between kind of doing some things on a local level, uh, some things with parts of the business joined up and some, some things with the whole of the business. At the outset of um, putting AB Connect together, we recognised that procurement was one of those areas that that really could drive some value. And what we expected at the beginning was about utilising scale and buying power. What we've subsequently learned is that actually it's about connecting the right people within the business to get to the right outcomes. If you talk to the team today, where they are today compared to where they were four years ago, uh, they can see now that this kind of AB Connect business that still gives them their local identity as well is a much stronger entity um, and gives them more opportunities today than, than they had originally. In 2014, the decision was taken to combine the ABCA, the ABNA and the B2B businesses to form the single entity AB Agri China. Last year, we put the compound feed and the co-product feed business together as AB Agri China. It has been tremendous success on business growth and profit improvement. With the combined product portfolio, we are now able to better serve our customers, especially in the ruminant segment. Looking back over just three decades, AB Agri's progression from small but visionary team to multinational organization has been remarkable. This vision to empower individuals and groups to share knowledge, seek improvement and create opportunities for growth has promoted innovation and pushed boundaries. A willingness to reorganise and a curiosity about new sciences, technologies and practices have resulted in a group-wide culture that sustains growth and benefits AB Agri's customers and the wider industry. With the challenges food production faces in the next century, business as usual is simply not an option. But as a community that cares deeply for agriculture, AB Agri will continue to adapt as it's done throughout its first 30 years. And in the face of new questions, its purpose will remain the same. Change for the better.